it's essentially very simple. We've got uh, basically two anchors with a line between them and the line is held up near the surface by a series of floats and hanging from that line is a series of ropes and the muscles grow on those ropes. It's a bit like a, a, a giant washing line. It's a relatively small harvest today, but uh, we can do up to 40 tonnes from the one boat there. This is the UK's first large-scale offshore mussel farm and it's been sited just to the west of the marine protected area we've been monitoring since 2008. We were really interested to know whether sighting a mussel farm like this on heavily degraded seabed habitat, could they actually start to recover similarly maybe to the marine protected area? So the main aim of my PhD was to carry out a full ecosystem assessment of the mussel farm and the area in which it lies. Um, so I look, took a full ecosystem approach looking at the benthic habitat. So I did in fauna, I did what lives on top of the seabed and I also looked at what lives within the water column, um, plankton and also pelagic fish. So you start surveying before anything has happened and then you continuously monitor this after. So Danny's PhD went for three survey uh, seasons and I carry on from that. So since 2018, that was my first survey season and the PhD will run for four years, that is three survey seasons. The work at the Mussel Farm, we really try to understand the, the whole ecosystem effect. So we're measuring and how animals change on the seabed using towed video cameras, remote operated vehicles, we're using static baited cameras, we're taking grabs of the sediment to understand how the animals inside the sediment are changing over time. We're measuring plankton, we're counting the birds and the mammals, and we really try to understand how the whole ecosystem is interacting with this mussel farm. We bait these um, pots um, a couple of days before we need to catch the animals. Um, we bait them on the surface of a boat and we put them down in strings, typically five or six pots per string. They then sit on the seabed um, with bait and attract the animals in through the, through the mouth here. Um, after a couple of days we then go back out um, we're, with uh, local fishermen and then we retrieve these pots on deck and then the animals are caught within here which is called a parlour. Um, so we get crab and lobster um, hopefully uh, come up in these pots um, and then uh, we have to aff affix a, uh, an acoustic pinger. Um, so we set the, set the pinger going by turning it on um, and then we get the, lay the animal out and then we use a strong epoxy resin to attach these uh, pingers to the back of the crab and the lobster. And then over the side of the boat, we then return these in animals individually around where they were caught. We've, we've learnt that over time, um, all these predators, the commercially important species, are increasing in number at the farm. In fact, they weren't there when we first started doing the baseline surveys. And over time, we're seeing all these really interesting, valuable species increase. And, um, but they're not in the control areas that we continue to monitor. So what we want to know is, are they only staying in the mussel farm or are they spilling out into neighbouring fishing grounds or into the MPA? And so just to understand what the real value of this mussel farm is to the wider fishery and the wider area of conservation. Um, so today we're in Solcombe Harbour and um, this is one of the sites where we tagged bass a few years ago. Um, we've also got receivers throughout the estuary. Um, and um, early results are that we found um, yeah, fish moving from Solcombe to the Mussel Farm and then we've also found fish from Solcombe, Dartmouth, Tynmouth and Exmouth all moving between these different estuaries. Um, and so today we're going to lift some of the receivers out in the harbour here today um, and see what data we've got on them basically. We're using um, a technique called acoustic telemetry and this involves getting um, a small tag that pings um, and then um, inserting these into sea bass but also um, gluing them on the backs of crab and lobster. And then we set up an array of um, listening devices that when any of these species come near it they'll detect the presence. So every single species gets um, a specific ID code. We also give them a name. We often name them after local fishermen um, or the farmers. And um, so when, when they come near the, the devices, we know whether the crab or the fish is near it. So you put a small tag like this inside the fish 
um, and then that emits um, a unique ping every 90 seconds. Um, and basically we have uh, sort of receivers that are strategically placed not only in this estuary but in um, pretty much every estuary along the South Devon coastline and at the mussel farm and um, whenever the fish come within about 300 metres of that receiver it will log the time and date that each individual fish arrived. Um, and to date we've tagged about 210 fish um, across uh, four estuaries now um, and um, yeah and as I say we've detected all this movement between the estuaries and movement out to the farm and then back into the estuaries that they were tagged in. Now the farm is located on an area of seabed where we don't tend to find many crabs and uh, lobsters. Um, the fishermen themselves when we told them about this project they said you won't catch anything there because it's typically known as ground where you won't catch uh, crab and lobster. However the mussel farm has really uh, changed the environment there and it's um, changing the uh, habitat and has, by putting down these pots and catching these animals we've shown that there are actually um, decent numbers of both crab and lobster living uh, on and around the farm. I hope that this type of research will provide that um, evidence that actually aquaculture installations can have a benefit to, to the natural environment from a wild capture fisheries perspective, uh, but also from a kind of a nursery ground perspective. It's been do well documented in New Zealand that this type of installation uh, can have a spillover effect, which, uh, which can then provide actually a better catch for, for wild capture fishermen, for example, crabs, lobsters, and then, uh, and then some of the fish as well. Species can actually congregate around these installations and, and actually provide benefit to local fishermen. The role of Plymouth University is really how we develop a sustainable blue economy. So that is how we support fisheries, how we support aquaculture, so we're having benefits for livelihoods and also the environment. The kind of work that we do, which is to link the social and economic picture to the ecological picture, is important because we take people's views into account, people's perceptions into account, and we match up the evidence base so we can try to balance human needs with those needs for improving and restoring marine environments and also developing blue economies. Uh, Plymouth have been great to work with. Um, they've been really proactive on providing information um, throughout the claims process and throughout the, uh, the development of the project. Uh, and they've been really interactive with the flag board. Emma actually made the trip from Plymouth to Weymouth for the flag board meeting for the, for the presentation of the meeting um, of the project, uh, which I think goes a long way and the, the board, I think, appreciate that sort of thing. Using this new technology has um, provided all sorts of amazing insights into these species movements. So we now understand much better where they're going all around the coast, um, which habitats are most important. But what we want to do now is expand this to a much bigger spatial scale. So we want to understand across the whole of the southwest or the UK. Um, and certainly our next plans are to increase our, um, our array of listening receivers across the channel, working with French partners as well. Um, to understand how all these species are moving in this much wider area. So thinking on the big picture, um, in places like America, um, uh, Australia, those kind of places, there's these huge systems in the coast where they have these really big networks of receivers where you can track fish moving all up and down the country, it's from California all the way up to Alaska. And um, in Europe, this kind of technology is getting momentum and uh, what I really like is just these, a bigger system in the UK so we can track these bigger movements and really collaborate across different research groups and different universities and we can get a really good picture of where not only bass but um, other species like crab, lobster, other fish like pollock, um, tuna, how they're moving in the coast and what habitats they're using and what are really important to these fish. Um, for, this, for this particular project um, what we're trying to do is monitor not only how the bass are using these sort of coastal areas but also how they're using the mussel farm and how connected those two environments are basically um, and I th hopefully we'll get, we'll get a really good idea of that using um, this this kit basically. And, and only then can we really inform on um, ecosystem based fisheries management which once we understand all the species movements and which habitats are most important can we protect it properly and have sustainable profitable fisheries um, and you know properly recovered marine environments of areas that are most important to our commercially important species.